Okay, hello to everybody and good afternoon and welcome to the ones of the first uh, workshop session. And uh, well, thank you to selecting this session, uh, sorry, and thank you to you for being here. And um, so uh, this is my pleasure to present the Dr. David Alcantara, who is an expert in uh, European Union's um, uh, funding system and scheme. And uh, well, uh, he has more than 15 years of research experience. And well, uh, the implementation he about the implementation in in this European project, the FP7 at the uh, Horizon 2020. Um, well, David Alcantara is a, is a chemist by the, um, well, the University of Malaga with a PhD in nanotechnology uh, uh, in the CSIC in the, and the University of Sevilla. And well, he was a beneficiary of uh, a fellowship in Harvard Medical School and two consecutive Marie Curie Action Fellowship so in the Harvard Medical School, so for this reason, he has a huge uh, knowledge and experience about this topic. And also he has published a total of 27 um, papers in international journals, uh, eight, eight articles, two books, three complete books, um, uh, a huge etc and an issue for National Harvard. Um, so, and the most relevant for, for this uh, workshop is that he is the CEO of the SACIC, the program Financiación e Investigación. And, and there, he co authored the practical guide Éxito en la Financiación de Proyectos Europeos. He published it uh, three years ago, no? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, well, I think this is quite all, sorry, <laughs> if not. And let us to listen to David Alcantara and his speech. And when he finishes, uh, please feel free to ask whatever you want, because this is a workshop. I will thank you very much for your attention. And um, okay, now I pass the word to David Alcantara. Oh, I have this, okay. <laughs> Well, first, uh, thank you everybody for coming here. I also want to thank you for the organizing committee of this uh, event that uh, I think is, has been a, a success, no? a success of attendance of people and the speakers no? that uh, have been invited. So I, I asked with Pedro, uh, uh, if, what do you prefer, if we talk in Spanish or in English? I, I, me personally don't care, but uh, if you are, tired of <laughs> listening in, in English all day, so we can switch. In English? Yes? Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> so the, the talk today is uh, about the, the future, okay? More concrete about your future. Now, uh, I want to, to ask you, uh, who of you are uh, finishing now the, the PhD? Mm -hmm. Okay, not too much, not too much. So it's good. So I structure this talk in two parts, okay? The first one is uh, an overview of the European opportunity uh, for doing a, a postdoctoral uh, research. Mm -hmm. And the second part uh, will be to give you some practical advices on how to uh, prepare the proposal. Okay, let's go with the first part. So the critical question right now for you is, uh, what do you want to do when you finish your PhD thesis? <laughs> See. <laughs> so uh, in, 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 my, in my opinion, there are uh, these three possibilities, okay? Continue with the academic career, uh, move to the industry, or take a sabbatical, okay? Who of uh, you will uh, continue on the academia? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Most. 
and who have uh, decided to move to the industry? No one, no one. Okay, and take a sabbatical? <laughs> you. <laughs> so normally when you, you are finishing your, your PhD, you are so I'm stressed. I'm <laughs> I'm <already there>. <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So this talk will be focused on the people, uh, or will be more of interest with the people who will continue academic career. Okay. So and this, uh, I have a couple of slides uh, to explain you um, very briefly. Okay, the the main, the, the whole uh, European funding structure. Okay. Uh, so uh, in. Uh, what well, is important for us, because we are a scientist, is uh, the framework program, the new framework program called Horizon 2020. And this program came from the seven flagships that the uh, European Commission defined as a uh, priority, a strategic priorities. So these are these seven, digital agenda, youth on the move, innovation union, and so on. So for us, it's important this one, okay? Innovation union that is structured well, uh, the Horizon 2020 program. And this program is split in three big pillars, okay? And each pillar has many different uh, funding uh, categories, okay? For you, uh, so the three pillars are uh, excellent, uh, sorry. The first one is excellent science. Uh, the second is called societal challenges. And the third one is the industrial leadership. So the, the, most, uh, the most interesting for, for all of us is these two, okay? Excellent science and societal challenges. But the uh, European Union wants also to collaborate with industry. So that's why uh, they include a whole pillar here for collaborating and uh, working with the industry. Uh, Horizon 2020 is a big opportunity. Okay, for us, especially now that the uh, national fundings, you know, are, have been cut uh, very, very hardly. So they have uh, 75,000 75, million euros dedicated to innovation and research. So here, uh, this is a good news for us. Horizon 2020 has been designed uh, to fund all your research career, okay? Starting from your pre-doctoral degree, okay? The PhD thesis that can be funded under a Marie Curie actions uh, with the ITM uh, solution that we will see in a moment. And going, when you finish your, your thesis, you go to, uh, for a postdoctoral uh, for a postdoctoral job, also under the Marie Curie actions. When you increase your experience and expertise, you can also apply to the ERC uh, starting grant that is uh, that give you 1.5 million euros for starting your own group as a, as a PI, you know, independent researcher. And when you gain uh, and consolidate yourself, you can also apply for the consolidator grant that is for establishing and expanding your group. Uh, when you become uh, a leader no, in, in the field. Uh, so you can also start to, uh, to apply for more complex and bigger projects, okay? The collaborative projects. Here you can, uh, you can find big cooperation projects, big uh, networks, networks of excellence. There are so many, so many programs that you can apply. And also the most important grant, okay? Here for individual uh, researcher is called the advanced grant. Okay, these are for, for big, uh, big research project, five years duration. And the, here you can obtain 3.5 million for your group. So this is the, the most important uh, grant for researcher right now in Europe. So we are going to focus here, okay, in the Marie Curie action because it's the next uh, logical move uh, right now for you. What are, what are the, the Marie Curie action? Now it's called Marie Skodoska Curie. This is why this S in the middle. The Marie Skodoska Curie uh, supports the career development and training 
of research, okay, uh, uh, through a mobility. Okay, what does it mean? So you have to move to another country to do it. Uh, it covers all scientific disciplines, so it's very, very wide, from social science to nanotechnology, and uh, has a focus on innovation skills and, uh, and training. Okay. Uh, well, the budget is 8%, okay, 8% of the total Horizon 2020 budget, that is 6,000 million euros, it's a lot of money. Uh, so there is two types of uh, Marie Curie uh, actions, one for organization and one designed for individual researcher. For organization are these three, uh, I'm sorry for the slides, uh, I don't know what's happened. <laughs> in the computer that move it the, the, the letters, don't worry. So the four organizations there's these three, okay? The ITN, the Innovative Training Networks, El RISE, the Research and Innovation Staff Exchange, that this is a directly exchange of uh, staff with the industry. So some people from the industry come to academia and from people from the academia go to the industry. And the COFAM, and this is uh, national and regional programs. And for individual researcher, there are two types, so European fellowships and global fellowships. Okay, well, this is a, a description, a brief description of each, each action. We're gonna focus on this one, the one for the individual researcher. The, the yes, so the ITN is, go, uh, is, is for the PIs. The PI, right. Okay, so this, uh, these are big training networks from collaborative training networks and also for establishing European doctoral programs. Uh, RISE is in collaboration academia and industry, so you have also to be uh, a PI. And the COFAN are uh, actions that are normally as institutions, universities or regional institutions, okay? That also supports PhD, uh, PhD student and postdoctoral student. So I, I will show you later. Uh, for individual research, something that we can uh, do it ourselves, are these two, European Fellowship and Global. These are the characteristics of each one. So the European Fellowship are, uh, are targeting people who want to do a postdoc in Europe or in associated countries. That are, uh, I will see uh, in a moment how many are there. So the, requisite, uh, the requirements are that you have to, to, to have in your belt more than four years of research experience that is normally covered with, the, with your PhD thesis. The duration is one or, or two years. You can choose the length of the project you, you want to present in the proposal. And the financing of, of this, uh, they, they give you money for your salary. They call it living allowance and traveling. Uh, they also give you money for research and, and training costs, for example, assisting to uh, conferences, uh, publication in open access, they are, uh, are covered by, by this money. And uh, they also give you, they also give to the institution that accepts you, that is called the hosting institution, some money for, uh, call it overheads, okay? Here, here, uh, the most important uh, and, uh, rule that governs this is the mobility rule. Okay, the researcher, you don't have to, must not have reside on the, uh, on the country of the hosting organization for more than 12 months in the three years immediately prior to the deadline. So what does it mean? So if I have uh, been working in, the, in Germany for 13 months, I cannot apply for a Marie Curie in Germany, but I can go to Italy, for example. So this is the main, the main um, uh, exclusion rule, if you want to say it like that. Yes? Sorry, you said four years of research experience. You yeah. said Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, it, it, this is another uh, requirement. <laughs> so you have to present your PhD title. I, I obtain. <laughs> okay. 
But it's not compulsory to have finished the, the PhD thesis when you apply for the. You can obtain it in, in a month or two months later. If, so they, they don't uh, exclude you with that. So the second option is the global fellowship. It's the same, it's the same like, uh, the, like before, but for going to another uh, non-European uh, country, okay? Uh, which country? Like United States, Japan, uh, Canada, Australia, all these countries. This uh, also has uh, uh, a different condition. You can do one or two years in the outgoing phase, okay? When you go outside, you program a, a, a project for two years maximum, and also have one year of retard in the uh, host institution that you uh, choose, okay? You can do it with your uh, actual uh, PhD group if you want, or you can change for another group in Europe. But you have one more year of grant, and, and this also mm, gives you more flexibility if you want to uh, search for new opportunities or package with uh, industry or whatever you want. So the financing is the same. They give you mm, your salary and training and research cost for the lab, uh, publication, etc., and also has the mobility rule. Okay? You cannot have uh, been working in the United States for more than 12 years if you want to go to the United States, of course. So the Marie Curie has uh, four different panels. Okay? The, the first one is the standard European fellowship. This is the, the most common panel uh, that the, it applies for the European uh, fellowship. The second one is, the, is called the Career Restart Fellowship. There's this specific panel for people that uh, uh, has uh, stopped the research activities for a long period, for example, maternity leave or sabbatical or, or job in the industry and want to come back to academia. So this is the specific panel. It's called the Career Restart. Uh, there is another panel called uh, Reintegration Fellowship. And this is a panel specifically for people that are working in a, in a third country that want to come back to Europe to uh, introduce uh, his or her research. Okay? And this panel uh, is new, has been introduced this year, the Society and Enterprise uh, panel. Uh, at, at this time, uh, I really don't know if this panel will be uh, maintained, I guess that yes, okay? This panel uh, is directly uh, targeted for people who want to uh, go to industry, to do a postdoc in the industry. For example, a pharmaceutical company, you can do, you, you can apply for this panel. Very interesting. No, uh, this, uh, these are the, the the, different, the, the panels, the classification that the Marie Curie action actually has. Okay? The, the budget is split between these four uh, panels. Okay? So the, most of the money go here okay, to the first panel because uh, are the most uh, applicants and the, the rest of the budget is split. This one, is, uh, this year has been fixed. I don't remember the, exactly the, the amount, but uh, so this, uh, this are minority, okay? So the fields that are able to be found, so are, uh, Marie Curie, I think, is the most wide open uh, uh, funding uh, program because it covers uh, eight uh, big fields and also sub-disciplines inside of this field, for example, chemistry, covers analytical chemistry, organic chemistry, physical chemistry, etc. And so on with all the, the, the fields, the scientific fields. So almost uh, any researcher can apply for that. Which countries are eligible for Marie Curie? So European Union defines three country categories. Okay, the, fir the first one is the member states, are the 29 countries that forms the European Union. The second are the associated countries that has some agreement 
uh, and political agreement between them and the European Union, and the rest are called third countries. So for a European fellowship, eligible countries are member states and associated countries. So you can go to all of these countries. Which countries are associated countries? There is a lot, okay? Plus the 29 European countries, you can go to all of these. And I also mark here in red the countries from Latin America. So if you want to go to Latin America for, for the language or for all the, all the reasons, you can go. And uh, the third countries, all others that are not included here. So uh, I mentioned USA, Japan, Australia, etc. Uh, how this uh, are evaluated? No? How these grants are evaluated? So they, uh, so you submit your proposal, and after that, the uh, your proposal is sent to three expert reviewers. Uh, these uh, reviewers, we take the, the your proposal and evaluate. Uh, with uh, evaluation criteria that the Commission sent us and uh, make your puntuation. Okay? It's uh, an objective puntuation in all the items that the Commission wants, wants us to, to evaluate. After that, we submitted the report to the project officer and it gives you the, 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 um, the average puntuation and get listed. So, uh, the evaluation is made on three uh, on three items. So the the first one is the excellence of, of the project, okay, the scientific excellence. The second one is the impact of the project and the impact of the training that you will receive through the proposal. And the second one and the third one, sorry, is the implementation, okay, if you how you will perform uh, the project. The um, the puntuation uh, is. Uh, the weight of the, the, of the puntuation is 50% for the scientific excellence. So remember, we are in the first pillar, okay? So, uh, uh, excellent science. So, so this, uh, this criteria weight more than the other two. But uh, these two are also very important, okay? So if 50% of your puntuation calls, comes from these two uh, criteria. So, all, all of them must be perfect, okay? Uh, more information, well, here I put you the, the URL of uh, the European Commission webpage, okay, the Marie Curie Actions. There you can see all, the, all this general information. So another interesting thing uh, is uh, uh, the COFAN opportunities. So in the your access uh, portal, uh, there is uh, so this your access is, is a website that publishes all the uh, jobs opportunities for PhD and postdocs. So you can go uh, there. They call it European Research Program and look for the COFAN option here. You tick here and it will give you a list of all the opening open. Uh, opportunities, okay, under the COFAN. So it's a Marie Curie action, <coughs> but the COFAN. So don't, don't forget that. Okay, so now we start the, the, the second part, okay, the practical advice on, on the Marie Curie. So why I recommend you to, to apply for, <laughs> for a Marie Curie, okay? I have, I, put it, I have been there, no? in the same situation like you are. So I finished my PhD and asked, hey, now what, what, where, I, where I can go now no? with my background? So I discovered the Marie Curie action through a colleague that, uh, that recommends me because nobody has talked to me never about this action. So I was very naive and I applied in 2008 for one, and get it uh, uh, in 2010, okay, after resolution, I enjoyed the first one uh, in 2010 to 2013. Uh, I was in Harvard Medical School in USA, and uh, the year of return, I did it in, uh, in 
Zaragoza, it was my PhD group. And during that time, I applied for a second Marie Curie because I was in, in the eligibility of uh, criteria, so I, everything was okay. So I applied for another one and get it again in 2013 to 2015. I uh, was uh, performing at the BioNan, the Center of Bio Nanomedicine in Malaga. Uh, since That's it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the mobility rule. I I uh, I was compliant with the mobility rule. At the, the at the was three or two years. Well, I combined it with another Fulbright grant okay. that I obtained. Okay. So. <laughs> so at the end, three years. Yes. Out yes. Of, of Out of Spain. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So since 2013, I'm an expert reviewer in the field of chemistry for the commission and for another uh, international organization like the William Harvey and other uh, many co-funds organizations. So uh, I'm probably mm, review 50, 60 Marie Curie action per year. So there is a lot on that. So. That's uh, all under my belt right now. So my personal experience with these uh, grants are very good. Okay, the first one I want to highlight is uh, they give you a good salary. Okay, more than two thousand four hundred euros, but that also depends on the family status. So if you have family, if you have kids, or are married, they give you extra money to pay for that. Okay, they also give you. A, a, a money for mobility, okay? You are moving to another country, so they pay you an extra, uh, uh, an extra budget for that. Uh, also, there is a correction in the salary, okay? It's not the same to do a postdoc here in Spain than doing in Switzerland, for example. The cost, the living cost of Switzerland is higher than Spain, fortunately, and so they pay you a little bit more there. Okay, to uh, equalize the, the level of all Marie Curie's. And another good thing is that uh, they give you money for research and training, okay? About uh, 9,600 9, euros per year that you can spend uh, in workshops, in uh, attendance to conference, in language training, for example, whatever that is, uh, uh, improve your uh, skills, okay? That's the secret. But also has the, the negative part, no? I, I want to always uh, <laughs> say that uh, there is no, all, not all is gold, no? So the, dro the main drawback that I discovered was this, no? The, you have to work 100% exclusivity to the project, okay? You cannot work in two projects at the same time. Uh, you cannot also ask for additional funding as PI. Uh, but I also discovered this, that this is negotiable, okay? Uh, in my first Marie Curie, I, I tried to apply for a R01 grant in the United States. So I wrote the, the project officer and, and he told me that it wasn't impossible, you cannot apply for that, uh, so I couldn't. But on my second Marie Curie, the project officer that I had was more reasonable and understood the situation and uh, the level uh, that I had at that moment. So I say, go ahead, go ahead, ask for it, and after that we manage. So you have to be also proactive, no? You have to uh, always uh, speak with the project officer and see and expand the opportunities that you have. So another drawback were well, the high feedback that you have to, to, to submit a lot of reports and periodic reports. And probably the most important that nobody tells you is that if you quit, you have to return all money back. And this is very important <laughs> because if you, for example, go to Japan and the second month you get the press there 
and say, okay, I want to go home and <laughs> with my mama, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot do it. Well, you can do it, but we are talking about a serious money. So uh, I'm, I'm telling you about 200, 250,000 euros, you have to return back. So it's, it's like a mortgage. So it's important. <laughs> so, yes? Is, uh, is uh, the medical treatment that you need only in Spain? So you have to, you have to, I think in, in these strange cases, you have to report to the project officer and, and ask for, for their permission. So you can also stop the grant. Okay, I, 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 I'm not able to work, okay, for three months. You, you can stop three months. Okay, uh, and continue later. Okay, of course. Yes. Uh, no, that's not possible, because the <coughs> the the project is assigned to a beneficiary, to only one beneficiary, and is evaluated to that. Okay, so if you. Uh, you write the proposal, and I want to go with uh, Dr. Johnson in Harvard Medical School, for example. Uh, so the evaluator see, okay, the project fit very well with the Dr. Johnson experience and background. So we evaluate that. So you cannot, okay, the project is mine, I wrote, no, but uh, is in the evaluation, not only count the project, okay? I, I w we will see in, in, a, in a moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, it represents uh, it fixed amount. It's a fixed amount of uh, 500 per month more. Yes. So Sorry, for we, yeah. we want the microphone for us. <laughs> well, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Ah, for recording, for recording, okay. <laughs> we, we will put the, all the session and the rest of the, of the six, all six workshop session on internet. If you want to mm -hmm. see tomorrow the rest mm -hmm. that you... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So we need the... So yes, ad addressing addressing your question is is that so it's an increment of 500 euros per month per researcher. Yes, and it, it will go directly. So they they they, they make a, an administrative checking. So for example, I have a kid. So you present. Uh, the, the book, uh, ¿cómo se dice en inglés? No, sé. no, no, no. El libro de familia. Family book. No, no sé. No sé. Sorry. Lo presenta, el libro de familia. Y, oye, sí, tiene dos niños. Pues entonces aplica para esto. O incluso si estás casado, no hace falta tener niños. Estás casado, pues, oye, pues mi mujer, mientras que encuentra o no encuentra trabajo, va. Oh, sorry. So they, they cover you in this amount. So, and this is a fixed amount for the whole grant, okay? For the 24 months or the 36 months, depends on the, on the scheme. Okay. Okay, so which, which Marie Curie scheme works best for me? So this is the question that many people uh, are asking. So, uh, we define three steps, okay, for choosing that. The what, the where, and choose, okay? So, so the, the, the what, what do I want to do, okay? What I, uh, so I, I want to continue my PhD research line or not? I want to change, so you can do it. You can expand your, your research line, uh, learning new techniques or new methodology. So, and this is 
are also uh, something that is evaluated positively. Okay, so uh, so my recommendation is that no, that you go and expand your training as much as you can. So and for that you have to choose a very group, a very good group. And the second uh, the second question is where where do you want to go? To Europe, to Japan, to Canada, etc. Or I. Uh, I, can, I want to go to a, a place where I can practice surf because I love surf. So, okay, good situation. California, well, sounds good. Or where I can study polar bear, for example, and just limit you, or <laughs> constrain your, <laughs> your research line and situation very much. So that's also uh, two questions that, that you have to, to focus. So question one and two uh, tells you if you need the European or the Global Fellowship in a very easy way. And the third step is to choose a very good research group and uh, how to choose it. So we have also a methodology for that. Uh, the first uh, key uh, feature that you have to focus when looking for a research group for your Marie Curie is the compatibility of the research line. Okay, and we, in, we will introduce in a moment the, what we call the Marie Curie trinomial. Uh, so, the, mm, the group where you are going to, to go must be in line with your, uh, with your background, okay, and expand it a little bit. Uh, for me, uh, as a chemist, it's not logical, for example, to ask for a Marie Curie in, I don't know, in geography. No, makes no sense. Okay, so uh, if I, but I can expand. For example, I'm expert in nanotechnology. I would like to focus on atomic force microscopy. That is very necessary for my field. Okay, for my research line. So I can do it. I can apply that. Okay, because it's very specific and expand my my knowledge. Uh, you have also to focus on the PIH. Okay, the hosting group that you're going. So I always recommend between um, uh, 30 and 60 years old. Okay, Below 30 is too young uh, uh, and above 60 is too old. Okay, So you have uh, 30 years of, uh, of, of range to choose, so uh, do it. <laughs> and uh, you have to focus on the publications in the last five years of this PI. Okay, And also have uh, have to look uh, the independent, the original articles versus the review, because it also gives you an idea of the uh, um, the publication rate. Okay, and for you as a postdoc, you want to publicate a lot, so you have to focus on that. Uh, it's also important the number of grants and other funding that the group has obtained in the last five years. Okay, and also. Uh, I put it here, no? pay close attention to ERC grants. So if you go for uh, uh, in a group, a PI that has, for example, an advanced grant, this is looked and evaluated very, very positively, okay? Because this group has been, uh, prior to, to this one, has been evaluated and very, very positively. So it gives you extra point. Uh, you also have to focus on the speed answering your emails when contacting them because you know you you never uh, uh, contact them first by phone hey dr young how are you no <laughs> so you uh, in make an introduction an email introduction hey i want to speak with you i'm interested in doing a postdoc in your lab blah 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 blah, blah. and after that you get the the conversation by phone or by Skype or whatever. So if the PI takes one month or two months in replying your email, so it means that there's no interest for him or for her in getting more personal, more stuff in his lab. Uh, so take attention to that too. Uh, also this, uh, this advice is, is uh, important. So take the, the opinion Take the opinion of his actual fellows and PhD students, okay? Write an email to them. I always recommend and have a template for that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm thinking in, in doing a postdoc in your lab, how is your PI? 
be, be clear, okay, how it's, uh, uh, it's good to work with or it's crazy mad and give you how many hours do you normally <laughs> work in the lab or so all this kind of, of, of thing that are interesting from the personal uh, uh, point of view because remember you are going to stay in, in, the, in that group two years or one or two years Okay, so it's important to consider the, the atmosphere no, in, the, in the lab. Uh, I always uh, recommend the, uh, when, when you choose a, a PI, go for a group, a not too big group, okay, between four, ten researchers, okay, between PhD student and postdoc in the lab. Uh, bigger than that is uh, normally it's difficult to get by the, the, the PI, okay. So this, uh, this size is very, uh, very manageable and also you have to, to communicate quick okay, with the PI, that is important. And well, uh, another, another thing that you mm, can uh, look at is uh, if the PI has hosted another Marie Curie Fellows at their lab because in that way he or she knows how to manage this kind of thing. And so this is important. I also get uh, extra point for that. Uh, and now I want you to, to, to introduce you a new concept no? that, <laughs> that uh, probably nobody has talked about. So uh, the Marie Curie, the, the proposal, the project that you were going to submit to, to the evaluation is a, a product. Okay, you have to see it like a product, but not a normal product, it's a marketing product. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, a very good product that you have to sell it for the people. Who are the buyers of this? For the expert reviewers. Okay, you have to sell that your project is the best in the best way as possible. And for that, there is a methodology. So we develop what we call the Marie Curie trinomial. Okay? So the Marie Curie are made of three main players. Okay, uh, on one hand we have the project itself, the second one is the hosting group, and the third one is the researcher, you, okay. So and all these, uh, uh, the three elements has to be in equilibrium, okay. The objective when you are writing a Marie Curie proposal is to maximize all of them with equilibrium, okay. So. Uh, you have to, 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 to be good at that because one disequilibrium and the punctuation may ruin your, all your efforts. So the first, the first uh, aspect is the project, okay? So what, uh, what kind of project are uh, looking for the, the expert reviewers? So as we are in the excellent uh, science pillar, the first pillar, so uh, we are looking for scientifically accurate projects. So some projects that are innovative, introduce new ideas and new mm -hmm. methodologies. Projects that uh, hardly tackles societal, uh, medical, industrial problems. So there is a list of uh, problems that the European Union wants to be solved. So you have to uh, address at least one of them, okay? So that's kind of, of of problem solving proposal that you, you have to write up. The project has to be uh, realistic because if you introduce too many objectives and tasks on the project, the reviewers say, hey, you cannot do that in two years. So this is a project for 10 years at least. And the, we, we subtract point on the credibility. Uh, the project also has to be high impacts on society and uh, the stakeholders, okay? For example, we are developing a new chemical drug, so many stakeholders are implied, so patients, uh, political uh, issues, pharmaceutical companies, etc., etc. So you have to tackle all, all the stakeholders. The second aspect... Uh, sorry, David? Yes. I have a question in the no. last presentation. Yes. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, 
I listened uh, a few years ago uh, the the ten or the eight uh, European Union Union needs. Mm -hmm. uh, no, and shown the, the needs of the European Union. Yes, yes. Um, where I can uh, find these needs? So they, they well, if you you put in Google uh, priorities uh, to put focus in in this, not in, in of the, course, of the course. Uh, polar beer, no, to, to focus <laughs> on the main uh, topic, the, the most uh, interesting topics, no, yeah. the most interesting like problems, agriculture, yes. uh, food, uh, water. I don't remember the no. Yeah, well, each each of that uh, priorities has a list yeah. of uh, of problems. And um, where do I can? In the well, there, there are many many places, but in the in, in the Commission, in the website of the European Commission, you can you can look at the priorities. Okay. okay? And the, and they are also described in the work packages. Okay. The, uh, sorry, the work programs, the work program of each. Uh, theme okay they describe you all the, all the problems that that has to be solved and we we should to put focus in this uh, yes problem always, no always only in this always no. you can also look at for uh, for this uh, the societal challenges because uh, it, they probably tackle some of the problems that you are working with right now mm. Okay, and also you have to, in the proposal, you have to uh, to write. Okay, this uh, project also solve the problem blah 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 that is uh, in the topic one two three of the uh, this program. Okay, so you have to to write it clearly that you are solving a problem that the Europe wants to be solved. <laughs> so that's the key. Okay, so the hosting group, uh, 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 we have been talking about that uh, a bit. So the hosting group, uh, you have to focus in a, in a group with a lot of publication, okay? The PI with a, with a high Hirsch index, if possible. Uh, that is an authority in the field to establish credibility of the proposal. Uh, that normally works on innovative research line and that has a proper infrastructure okay, to, to perform the, 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 the research project. It's also, uh, it's also, um, uh, it's also uh, the give uh, points that it, oh, it's needed no, for, for, the, for the hosting group to have demonstrated capability in training, training PhD and, and student. And, and if they have participated in another European project, they give you extra points. Uh, it's also important that the, the PI has academic and industrial collaboration, okay? Because uh, you can expand your network over this, uh, this uh, collaboration. And the third one is you, no? is the researcher. Uh, what are the requirements for you, okay? high number of publication, okay? I always recommend more than five. And if you have uh, five first author papers, mm, well, it, will, it will work great. Uh, I also have uh, uh, some, some, uh, some researchers that I mentor to, to publish, uh, to submit the proposal with four publications and got it, okay? So that, uh, that is uh, a criteria that uh, when a reviewer see your trajectory, okay, uh, this guy has uh, read the, the thesis two months ago. So that's something that uh, is evaluated and very obje objectively. Yes? First author publication or? No, 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 no. If, if you have five first author, <laughs> I know, you are, you the, are best. the best. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessary to be first author, okay? Um, it's not necessary to be ori original papers. Could be re reviews. Uh, well, I recommend to be original papers because yeah. 
because uh, it establishes you as, uh, as the researcher that may fit in the project. Okay? Yes. So, and what about the impact factor of, of these papers? Uh, because it depends. Because, it, because if you have five but you're in, in really low and then instead you have three that are like high. Impact factors are something created by the big <laughs> publishing editorials. So, uh, really, of course, the, the higher the best, but uh, it's not the same the same impact factor for a, uh, for a paper in chemistry than in life science. For example, a, a good impact factor in chemistry is five. Actually, it's very good. And for life science, they say, no, five, mm, I don't know. <laughs> so the reviewer normally the, is a, an expert in the field and knows how to evaluate the contribution that you present. So you, you have to follow the the guidelines of your field. So. Um, what is most important for you? For example, only one nature or five uh, about the <laughs> impact factor? Five. Well, uh, I don't know what to answer. <laughs> <laughs> because in four years of your PhD... Uh, yeah, get results in one it, science. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an, enough. No, I understand. Or one science and an, another literal uh, mm -hmm. article, but. I understand. Uh, well, in that case, it has to be well presented, okay? And the contribution, and, that you, and you have to demonstrate that you are original, uh, that, that your idea is original <laughs> and is yours and everything. So, but if you present a nature paper, then you are the 30 author. It's difficult, no? Because uh, evaluators, uh, we also see the productivity of, of, of you. So, it's difficult to, to measure productivity on that. Okay. Um, sorry, we have uh, 10 minutes more for this workshop, okay? Okay, okay. No, I, I will finish. So we also evaluate uh, presentation at conference, okay, poster and oral presentation, and that your experience fit perfect with the presented project, okay. Uh, we also evaluate independent thinking. What does it mean? Okay, if you mentor uh, a lab technician or a master student, it also give you extra point on that. And also, if you have uh, established collaboration with another group, it also gives you more credibility and authority. So that is something that we are looking for. Uh, okay, with that, a, a little planning of what you have to do. So the initial planning and asking for, for information for, to the hosting group, you have to start three, four months before the deadline. Okay, as soon as possible, always. Uh, for writing the objective of the proposal, uh, you have to, to have it finished uh, six, eight, eight weeks before the deadline. The writing of the first draft is also four, six weeks before the deadline. And I always recommend that you send your proposal to review to your PI uh, and to as many people as you can, okay? Because they can give you uh, an objective point of view of what you are presenting and if it's clearly exposed or something that may uh, lack. So that is important. Well, the co after that, you do the content polishing to three weeks. Here, a letter of commitments this is important too, for uh, especially for the global fellowship. Letter of commitments are compulsory letters that are signed by the leader of the, the legal uh, representative of the university or the center that you will go, and uh, takes time, okay? First, take time to, to localize this guy, and second, takes time to, to get signed the letter, okay? So do it uh, six, eight weeks before the deadline. And after that, well, you always recommend a final proof reading. If you have a friend, an English friend, uh, or you can hire a professional proofreader for that uh, to make it the proposal very clear 
okay, and submit it one week before the deadline. Uh, here in Spain, we are used to submit it the same day at the last minute. <laughs> don't do that, don't do that, because uh, we are, uh, the, the platform saturates, normally saturates that. So um, thinking that our Europe, the whole Europe applying on the same platform and has, always has problems at the deadline time. Where, where you can find more information, more help, okay. So you have to, to, to read the guide for applicants, the Marie Curie guide for applicants. This is a, a document that you have to know uh, letter by letter, okay? So we also uh, uh, open uh, online Marie Curie seminars that give information and open questions uh, uh, for, for the people that are interested in applying uh, next year. So we will open the seminars on February next year. And also have a, an online course, specialized course, on how to write the, a competitive proposal. Okay, that we are also opening the matriculation next February. Okay, so I finished uh, my talk today. These are, we are the, at the Society for the Improvement of Science. Uh, we are in Sevilla. Uh, these are the, the contact and thank you, I want to thank you all of you for, for your attention. Uh, anyone More want questions? to ask the last <laughs> question? Hi, uh, nice talk. I want to ask you uh, my uh, of your point of view of reviewer of applications. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, it's a lot of, no, it will be a lot of work prepare all the proposal. So I, uh, I was wondering if you can uh, inform us if there are some, some criteria for not accept the application. For instance, if you have only two papers, your application will be out. Or, or another things that... Um, well. Uh, we can know for, for don't do all this job without any challenge. You know, <laughs> you know what, uh, th this is an interesting question because uh, when uh, the, what I told you before, there are some people with four publications, okay, that, uh, that got it, the grant, but we have to formulate it in, in a way that uh, to maximize the contribution and the impacts of these only four papers. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's all about the framework that you build up on the proposal. And, and there is a systematic way to do it, and we show it in, the, in our course, okay? So, uh, uh, by the way, the, the, the ratio, the success ratio of the people who do the, the course and, and submit the proposal is 50%, so it's really high. Yeah, 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 general. Uh, uh, well, it, without the general in Europe, is uh, less than 15 percent. So, we have set the objective of uh, obtaining 1,000 <laughs> Marie Curie's. So, it's a big objective, and I want to to work on that. Is this a number of grants for every country, or, or is no, it no, 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 no. There is a, com a global competition. It's a global competition. So, only. Only the, the, the best proposals will get funding. Not the best project, that is important. The best proposals, that's, that's why I, I introduce you the, the different concept. Yes. I would like to know your, your experience. According to you, as a reviewer, review, uh, what your opinion about the multidisciplinary mm -hmm. proposals, projects that insert in one proposal? So because yeah, well, well, the, well the, there is always a, a main field of development. So the main framework is, uh, I don't know, com organic chemistry. But organic chemistry will 
uh, you will collaborate with uh, quantum physics, for example, for some calculation that is important to understand chemical reactions. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> so, and that way you have to justify well the multidisciplinary on, on the proposal. Okay, and this is compulsory. Uh, always uh, recommend the people. Okay, is 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 well seen multidisciplinary proposal is a must <laughs> right now it's a must because uh, you are competing with uh, with all the projects that that uh, that i read are very excellent projects so it's diff very difficult to to make a distinction and punctuation over that So maybe this is a kind of repetitive question, but what's the most usual error that you find in the submitted, well, as a reviewer that you find? <laughs> well, there is a lot. <laughs> there yeah. is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. There must be something when like... We, we, the, the, most, the, the most one is that the people don't take, uh, don't take uh, attention to the impact and implementation. And they focus too much because we are used to, to work on the science field and we focus too much on, on the scientific part. Okay, and as I told you, the, the Marie Curie proposal is not, is not just a good scientific project. Okay, it's much more than that. And, uh, and those, uh, those items, implementation and impact, get uh, normally underworked. So. <laughs> It's because we are not uh, used to do it. No, I mean, That's the problem. We are, we are normally doing science. Yeah, no, That's I what mean, we know to do. But you have to, 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 to write well also. The yeah, well, I mean, it's because sometimes uh, I have read other applications and well, mm -hmm. some complaints about, OK, my, my application didn't go through because I forgot to put that I'm going to learn from my advisor how to write a paper hmm. and these kind of things can get you out but i don't know as a reviewer probably you find another type of error that I know, this guy forgot to put his name <laughs> no. yeah i have seen all kind of errors like for example they they don't put the the, the name of the pi come on <laughs> this is basic. You are telling me that you are going to uh, this group and what's the name of your PI? So, so but this, these this, areas is, this are is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. But these areas that you mentioned are the ones that get the worst uh, punctuation out of the, all the things of that you course, mentioned. Of they, course, they, they normally don't get the grant. So, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. understandable. Yeah. No. <laughs> Something to, to take into advance, like, yeah. Hmm. I will focus more in the science. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there is also problems with uh, establishing the uh, uh, and understanding the jargon, the commission jargon, like uh, word packages, deliverables, milestones, all these kind of things that <laughs> that we are not used to to handle in an everyday basis. So you have to to learn and to know how to use it. And a structure in the proposal. Yeah, I have a couple of friends that has fought a lot with the milestone thing and mm -hmm. the, the, the timeline. <laughs> yes, the Gantt, yeah. the pair diagram, everything. So yeah. you have to be familiar and know well how to, to structure and to present it. Um, okay, we have no more time. Uh, if you want to ask <laughs> in the coffee break more questions. <laughs> okay, I'll be there. <laughs> and now for the Thank next you very much. speaker. Yeah, no. Sí. Eh, te podría mandar algún email para tener los slides porque yo ahí copiando